Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, and welcome back to another very exciting tutorial sequel uh, where we're going to finish out this compositing side of this meteor crash. Now, we've created some debris in 3D Max, and now we're going to import that. So, here is the sequence uh, road explosion. We can drag that right into the project, and it will import it as a sequence. And uh, it'll just take about five minutes. Okay, so here's our shot. I'm going to go into the interpret footage, set this to 24, and hit OK. Now we're going to take our raw footage, drag it into the new comp button, and uh, wow, That's awesome. Um, I think we did this in one take, by the way. <laughs> he just knew what he was doing. So I'm going to trim the comp here, and uh, so we just have this. By the way, you can do a sky replacement uh, using uh, the sky replacement tutorial. Um, you know, that'll work. Actually, I recorded the first half of this tutorial earlier today. So I was in a good mood. I had lunch. Uh, things were looking up. And now it's like the middle of the night. I'm tired. I don't even know what we're doing here. I just don't know how excited I'm going to be. Um, some people ask me if I actually talk like that. Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here. And uh, the answer is no. Actually, I don't. Um, I do to annoy my wife. Hey, Trish, what's up? And she hates it. All right, we better get some work done. So first thing we're going to do is motion track our footage. So it's shot, handheld, but somewhat stationary. All right, bring up the tracker controls, and uh, we'll select the footage, track motion. We're going to track rotation and position. I'll zoom in here. And we'll put the first point over here on this, uh, let's see, maybe just right in this area here. And we'll make this uh, somewhat larger because it's sort of a, a fast movement. And we'll put this one on this box. And again, we'll make this a little bit larger. So that should be pretty good. And I'll go ahead and track forward. Let's go and create a new null object, and we'll apply our tracking data to it. Choose OK, and uh, then click Apply. X, Y, OK. And uh, we'll close that out. So now we have our null object, and we can just shut it off because uh, we don't need to look at it. OK, let's go and create our meteor that's going to come down out of space and land on the street. So. We'll create a new composition, and we'll call this uh, Meteor. And uh, we'll change the size to 1280 by 1200. We want it to be kind of tall. And that way we can sort of have the animation um, in a single frame that's static. So we'll make a new solid called Particular, abbreviated. Go trap code Particular. Now there's a cool preset in here called Fire Starter. And it just kind of looks like that, you know, kind of cool. And uh, we're going to use this. I'm going to create a null object. And I'll bring up the position for the null. And I'll alt click on the position. And we'll pick whip the position. And I'll alt click on the Z position and pick whip that parameter. So now when we move this around, it's going to move our particle around. Okay, so what we want to do is animate the null object in 3D space. So we'll go ahead and put it down here at the bottom, kind of where we want it to land. Turn on the stopwatch, move it over, and we want to move this up really high. And so basically it comes down and hits the ground. Now for the far away point, we want to push it very, very far in Z space. So if you hold down shift, you can really push it out there and you know drag it up so it comes from a little bit higher. If you hold down shift, you can do it a little quicker. And so now it comes down and sort of gets bigger as it hits us. So we'll zoom in here and uh, we'll make this come towards the camera a little bit more. Um, for particular, go and hit uh, E, bring up the effects and emitter. We'll set the particles per second um, the keyframe so that when it hits down, turn it on and then go forward one frame and turn it to zero. And so it just comes down and then it's going to stop. 
uh, we'll just make a few adjustments. We'll turn down the velocity random maybe to two and the velocity from motion to two. And that way it doesn't continue on but just sort of fades out. We can also make the size of the particles a little bit bigger. Just kind of fill the space up. We're just gonna kind of get through this quick, but that's the basic idea. We're gonna close the meteor and we'll drag that meteor comp on top here. And we'll time it up so that when it hits down, so I'll make some space here. When it hits down about right there, we want it to be just at the beginning of this pan down to the ground. So just about there. Then we'll take our road smashing up. Uh, let's see, road explosion. We'll drag that out. We'll slide it over. And we don't want to start it from the very beginning. We want to start it from sort of an exploded out position, maybe a couple of frames in. And we'll trim it. And we'll move it down uh, into position. And we'll take these two elements and we'll parent it to our null object. And that way, it'll stay somewhat connected in, uh, you know, in our scene. We can also go back into the Meteor, Alt, double click, and maybe we want it to be a little bit higher up, maybe over to the side. So you can play around with that and you know, it comes down. You also might want to increase the particles per second. Uh, let's see, you know, set this to 400 and so that it fills in a little bit better. And also the fire is being started by the auxiliary system. So the auxiliary system is particles being born from other particles, similar to what we did earlier. Um, so we may set the life to 0.1 and that will lower the fire amount, so 0 0.05 or so. so play around with those settings. Uh, we're just going to kind of use it as is. It hits down and we're going to have this explosion. Now we need to color correct our explosion. So we'll use uh, curves and we'll just sort of brighten it up a bit. Now we want to fix the fringe of the edges here. So we'll choose effect, channel, uh, let's do remove color matting. And we'll put that before the curves and we just bring it up and want to pick like a grayish color. And basically pick a color until it, it blends well and you know that works pretty good so that way uh, you know it looks a little bit better so that's the basic idea um, you know to get this uh, effect going is sort of having the meteor hit down and then we have the street sort of exploding okay so I've imported this ground cracks image and it's basically created in Photoshop from some different images and I painted some stuff and you know, put it together. And we'll go into the comp, we'll take the ground crack, put it below everything, and change the transfer mode to multiply. And that way it looks somewhat like the ground is, is cracked. And we'll just kind of position that and parent it to the null. And we want it to turn on pretty much at impact point. So we'll just start it there so it's off and then it's on, like kind of instantly. And we may want to just get rid of this front crack so we'll just create a mask, hit M, set it to subtract. And maybe we'll just add a couple of points so it's not too uh, sharp. Okay. So we've got our cracks. We've got uh, the explosion. Let's add another element using particular. So we'll choose new solid and uh, we'll uh, use a blue solid trap code particular. Now we're also going to use another preset and uh, we use the explode out dark and so just kind of a simple little explosion and we want to set it to directional and increase the spread amount something like that we can rotate it and uh, you know pretty cool now I may want to change the particles per second, so I'll hit U and double click on the first keyframe. We can set this to, you know, like 800 and have a lot more uh, pieces, um, maybe 600 
and let's go down to the auxiliary and uh, we're gonna play around with that size but first turn up the velocity and then we'll come down turn up the size of the particle so it sort of fills in a little better and we're gonna use this as sort of an added element so we need to speed it up so again turn the velocity up and then bring the size up so it fills in and we can also even just increase the particles per second you can see that's gonna fill in uh, with additional pieces so it's kind of a mixture of those two should uh, get the job done. Then I'm going to turn this back on so we can see everything. And I'm going to put this right below the meteor exploding on the street. And then I'll move this over. And we want it to sort of explode during our street explosion. Now it's going to be a bit tricky because we want it to start in the middle of itself. So we want to have it explode out. See, it looks a little slow, so we want to increase the velocity again. And we'll then parent this to the null object that has our tracking on it. And boom. Now, I may want to add just a frame to all of these elements. So we'll move them over one and then just drag it over so we have one more frame to work with, or maybe even two. That eh, one's good. We can also move our meteor over uh, so that it hits sort of right in the middle of that area. And uh, we have our explosion. We may want to make it so that those pieces aren't going out in front, but mainly just sort of up and side to side. And uh, velocity random. It's kind of cool. Give it uh, some different looks there. Turn up the size again. And. Uh, that's great. So that just adds another nice sort of natural element to the background explosion. Now we also want to add a little bit of light. So at the point of impact here, we'll take the particular. Now you may also want to turn the life of the auxiliary particles down, maybe two or one. Okay, now the other thing is we rendered out our street explosion at 60 frames per second. So I'm going to go into the time and do a time stretch to 65%. And that way it's going to be a little bit faster and uh, hopefully just look like it fits in the scene a little bit more and it's a little bit more exciting. Uh, okay, and of course you can play around with the speed and get it the way you want. Now I'm going to go ahead, take our particular layer and add a curves adjustment. And I'll go ahead, bring that down. And what I want to do is just sort of add a flash of color. Actually, I'll leave the layer there and I'll go into particular and I'll lower where the particle is. And that way it'll stay in the frame. So in the curves adjustment, we'll bring the brightness up and the red channel up also and the blue channel will pull this down so we get sort of a golden color and we'll add a stylizing glow maybe a little bit lower on the intensity and uh, we'll change it to a b color and we'll do you know orange and red Okay, so just a, a simple glow, and what we want to do is keyframe it. So we'll keyframe the intensity and the curves adjustment. And then we'll move forward about five frames, one, two, three, four, five, page down, by the way. And we'll reset the curves, and we'll turn the intensity of the glow down to zero. And that way, we'll have sort of this big kind of explosion when it hits initially. And it'll sort of uh, wither away after uh, the initial impact. And you can play around with the size of the particular. Um, we can do that by adjusting the Z position. And if we push it back further, um, it'll basically be smaller. And, you know, just depending on what you want to do, that's how that works. So, you know, the spread also kind of a cool way to mix it up. And if you rotate it, 
can see just sort of a different, uh, different take on uh, what you're looking at. Okay, now one more thing we can do is add a layer of smoke. So we'll create another solid, and uh, we'll just uh, we'll make it grayish gold, and we'll do trap code particular, and we'll come down to the emitter settings. We'll set the direction to disk, and that way the particles will sort of shoot out in a flat manner, and we'll sort of match the floor, and we'll turn the velocity up. And we want the particles to start and, and stop sort of immediately. So we'll bring the layer to the start. Set the particles per second to maybe, I don't know, 8,000. Keyframe it, move forward about three frames, and then set it to zero. And that way we just sort of get a ring of particles coming out of that one um, area. And rotate it again so it's sort of flat. And we'll turn up the velocity random. And we'll play around with the particle type. So we'll make the color kind of goldish, uh, you know, dusty colored. And we'll turn the size up. Turn up the size randomness. Uh, we'll lower the opacity. So it's kind of smoky. And uh, maybe increase the velocity and the size again. So you just want to play around with that. When you increase the size, you may want to lower the opacity. And then we can play around again with the rotation so it looks like it's flat. Also, if you turn up the spread, it'll fill the screen a little bit more as well. So that looks uh, pretty good. We could bring it closer to the camera. And we'll just go to the point where it's sort of on, move that over and we'll lower the opacity and sort of fade that in so we don't just see a big circular ball but instead more of a dusty um, looking effect. We lower the opacity to 80 percent on the layer and maybe turn it up to 100 over time. We also want to go into the physics uh, air, turn on air resistance and that way our smoke will slow down and kind of stay put. And then also we'll link our smoke to our null object. And uh, make sure that fades in completely. And we can adjust the position of this so it kind of runs along the surface of the ground. And let's do a quick preview. Um, finally, we can add some, some camera shake. Um, there's a tutorial called Earthquakes and HDR. Um, great tip on uh, creating some camera shake. We also have a preset in the presets section on the website. So if you're on the tutorial section, just click on the presets. And there's a cool preset called Aftershake for creating some cool camera shake. And if you're new to After Effects, be sure to check out our After Effects basic training learn some of the shortcuts and all the little things I do on the keyboard. And finally, be sure to check out some of our products. Um, you know, we got some cool stuff in there and uh, you know, it'd be a great way to support the site and we keep making these awesome tutorials. Um, you know, I can't wait to uh, get into some of the new subjects that are coming up and uh, it's just a lot of fun. Okay, so I hope you guys had a good time. Um, you know, there's other cool things that you can do if you're in a 3D program like Afterburn um, you know, just create a little bit more realistic looking, uh, smoky looking atmosphere. Um, that's one cool thing. You could add sort of a bright glow uh, during the impact to kind of create, uh, you know, another, you know, wild looking uh, effect. And uh, you can add some color correction. We got uh, Film Magic Pro. I have a preset called Green Easy. Drop that on there. And, uh, of course, some camera shake will make this uh, even more exciting. Um, anyway, my name's Andrew Kramer, and I don't really talk like this, but it's just the way you do things. Uh, you know, if you were to talk to some of my teachers back in the day, they would not believe that I am on the internet, uh, you know, public speaking about any type of subject. They probably would say, oh, Andrew Kramer, uh, he's probably living in a dumpster somewhere. Well, <laughs> I'm actually living in my car next to a dumpster, but it actually comes in handy. So 
despite what you know she says. Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. We'll see you next time.